Hello, this is Mike from Windows 7 Forums. In this video, we will discuss the difference in memory usage and handling between Windows XP, Windows Vista, and Windows 7. In each instance, each of these operating systems makes use of RAM, or random access memory, in different ways. If we can understand the memory utilization process between all three operating systems, we will have a better idea and deeper insight into how efficient each operating system is and how each operating system handles the memory that it uses and allocates to software applications. From the year 1986 to 2000, CPU or processor speed improved at an annual rate of 55%, while memory speed only improved at 10% per year. It was expected that memory would become an overwhelming bottleneck in computer performance. However, memory does not necessarily slow down a computer significantly, and we have seen improvements in memory in the form of DDR RAM, DDR2 RAM, and DDR3 RAM. Each type of memory is faster. For these benchmarks, we are using DDR3 RAM in a virtualized environment. As a refresher, RAM is the memory module in your computer that allows your computer to communicate with the CPU and to store valuable information live on the system while it's running. Any software application on your computer uses RAM. Any database application uses RAM. And pretty much anything that is running on your operating system will use a certain percentage of memory. What Windows operating system uses the most RAM? And does it matter? That is really the question. We must remember that the physical properties of memory modules have changed over the years. Since 2001, most computers were using SD RAM. Today, most computers are using either DDR, DDR2, or DDR3 memory. When we, took a, when we take a look at a Windows XP system, we see that it is actually using around 118 megabytes of RAM on a clean install on a 32-bit platform. However, this information can be misleading for a number of reasons. First reason is that the operating system is not caching or caching any files uh, that would normally be launched uh, by the operating system at all. So not much caching is going on. Under Windows Vista and Windows 7, a new technology called Superfetch was initiated which would take up more memory on the system but would allow applications to load potentially faster and for the system to start up and shut down a little bit faster. This is why you will see a discrepancy in the amount of memory in use when launching Windows Vista, Windows 7, and Windows XP. Furthermore, changes have been made to the core infrastructure of the operating systems themselves. Windows Vista and Windows 7 are optimized for multi-core processors. The code changes that have taken place have been numerous and in the tens of thousands. Security vulnerabilities have been patched, new features have been introduced, and new memory requirements have been made. If we consider that out of the box, Windows Vista and Windows 7 use around 500 to 400 more megabytes of RAM than Windows XP used, we can find a reason for this. With no applications open, Windows Vista and Windows 7 are apparently using 500 megabytes of RAM. However, this memory, the majority of it, is simply waiting for your computer to open a commonly used application. This process is a result of the introduction of the Superfetch feature. The Superfetch feature is designed to allow you to launch applications faster and without delay. Unfortunately, many people have interpreted this extra RAM usage as a major problem when in fact it is quite a small problem. The theory behind Superfetch is that any memory that is not in use on a system is going to waste. After all, power is going to those memory modules, so why aren't they being used? When all of a computer's memory is used and there, are no, there is none left for the system, what happens is a process called paging. And when memory paging takes place, the operating system will usually look for memory in the form of hard disk space on the computer's hard drive. It will try to use that as memory. In Windows operating systems, 
This is called the page file. The major bottleneck of most systems today is not the memory in a computer. As long as you have around 2 gigabytes of memory, you really shouldn't have too many problems unless you're really launching hundreds of intensive applications that use tons of memory or whether or not you're storing a huge database on your system. The real bottleneck is the hard drive and so when you run, do run out of memory and paging takes place, this will slow down the entire system. When we compare Windows XP with Windows Vista and with Windows 7 in memory usage, we can come to the conclusion that Windows 7 uses memory in the most efficient way possible. After nearly nine years of development, Windows 7 launches applications either faster or better than Windows XP did. The system boots faster than both Windows Vista and Windows XP did. And the system is far more secure than Windows XP will ever be. When we think about memory that's used on a Windows computer, we start to think about read access times and write times. And to prove our point, we'll take a look at some benchmarks to see what operating system performs the best in these scenarios. We use a clean install with the same exact hardware, the same exact amount of memory, and with this process we will see with Windows XP, Windows Vista, and Windows 7, which computer turns out to use RAM in the best way possible. Again, these benchmarks can be misleading because they're raw numbers and they do not in fact represent the user experience. Again, Windows 7 boots and shuts down much faster than Windows Vista and, and Windows XP did and it also functions on a much more secure level and it is much more reliable overall. But again, we will perform these benchmarks to see what the results are. When analyzing these benchmarks, these benchmarks do not provide much information to us. They do not give us much information about a real world scenario. More or less, they are simply number crunching different processes that are in some ways antiquated and in many ways do not reflect a real, real world situation. As a Microsoft certified professional, a Microsoft certified technology specialist, Microsoft certified information technology professional, and a Microsoft Certified Systems Administrator, as well as a Computer Technology Industry Association Network Plus Associate, and a Computer Technology Industry Association A Plus Certified Remote Support Technician, I can tell you from experience that Windows 7 is a superior operating system in every way possible. In fact, benchmarks can sometimes be so misleading that they lead people to either stay with an older operating system or use software that they really don't need anymore and could benefit from if they would only upgrade. I cannot stress enough how inappropriate some benchmarks can be and how inaccurate those readings can be. In this scenario we used a virtualized environment, but that virtualized environment was not too helpful. We could probably use physical hardware to conduct the same tasks and we would probably wind up with the same results. When we compare Windows 7, Windows Vista, and Windows XP, all in one, we are comparing apples, oranges, and bananas. There is simply no way to compare these three operating systems. They are entirely unique, and they, both all, they all offer benefits and disadvantages. But primarily, Windows 7 is Microsoft's premier operating system. It will support hardware far into the future, and by using a 64-bit platform as opposed to a 34-bit platform, you will be able to use more than 4 gigabytes of RAM well into the future, providing a fail-safe and future-proof computing system. So much has changed since the inception of Windows XP that it is difficult to gauge just how important the advent of Windows 7 could be for the computer industry. But one thing is clear, Windows XP is becoming a security risk inherently to every computer user. There are millions of Windows XP computers that have been compromised and have been turned into botnets which spam throughout the world. They remain unattended, unpatched, without security updates. And what you really need to do is look at your budget and determine, do I need a better computing experience? Do I want a better computing experience? Do I want security features? Do I want reliability? Do I want productivity and do I want performance?